Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. And it is time for another battle in the Pokemon Premier League Season 2. This is week number 6. <laughs> and this week we'll be going up against Mounte and the Immunity Idols. As always, there will be a team builder before the match. And if you feel like jumping straight into the action, there will be a timestamp for you below. Let's do this thing! This will be my first battle up against Mounte. And at the time of this battle, I believe he is undefeated in the league. Yay! We need to get to the battle! No! One more before we go? Yay! Okay, let's go. I've been away from battling and uploading to YouTube for a minute. But I would be surprised if you all had not heard of him. <laughs> Respect the pouch! Respect it! Just because of his recent exploits across various leagues, even in the Shuckle Premier League. You don't fuckle win Shuckle! The Pokemon Premier League, and um, yeah, just across everything that he touches, he is able to excel in. We're rich, we're prosperous, we're opulent, we're flesh, we're gilded, we're wealthy. He does it with such style and such kindness, and uh, he's just a fun battler to watch, so his information will be in the description. Do this thing. Up first, let's review the teams here. You can see that his team has access to Spectria, Sneasler, Chiyu, Blastoise, Rillaboom, Diancie, Ursaluna, Galvantula, Mesprit, and Squawkabilly. His two Terra captains are the Galvantula with Ice, Ground, and Electric, and the Mesprit with Psychic, Poison, and Steel. For this matchup, I was having trouble prepping for all of his various offensive options, and so I tried to nail down what I thought he would bring because between the, the combinations of like the grassy terrain and Sneasler using um, a grassy seed and buffing its defense while now doubling its speed or the combination of just sticky webs plus being able to run adamant or modest on some of his more fast offensive mods. He also has a trick room mode with his team with the Diancie or the Mesprit with Ursa Luna and to a lesser extent the Blastoise and the Rillaboom. Rillaboom can use Swords Dance, Blastoise can use Shell Smash, and it can also remove hazards. Don't forget about Squawkabilly, which has access to Facade with Guts-backed type attacks. Um, yeah, there were just a lot of different options to prep for here, and I nailed down the six that I would expect for him to bring as being the Spectrier, the Sneasler, the Chiyu, the Rillaboom, and either the Mesprit or the Diancie. I wasn't really sure. Uh, I did also kind of foresee possibly Ursaluna or Squawkabilly, um, but I didn't anticipate Galvantula, and um, to a lesser extent, I didn't really anticipate the, the Ursaluna and the Squawkabilly. So when I was prepping, those were ones to where I was just making sure that I could hit them or at least play around them, but they weren't on my the forefront of my mind. As far as what I brought, I have Terrakion with Assault Vest for my main answer to his Spectrier and his um, Galvantula, the Mesprit, and it gives me an answer to the Chiyu. With the fighting and rock typing, that means that I can come in on anything Chiyu wants to do, bar Ruination, um, and also bar Lava Plume Burn. And um, Spectria, of course, has to run Draining Kiss, but Draining Kiss barely does 20 to 30% to this Terrakion. At enough speed to outspeed the Chiyu, and then just the rest into Special Defense, Max Special Defense, and um, Attack. The Walking Wake, I also was a little bit more creative with because I ran Sunny Day, Hydro Steam, Dragon Pulse, and Flip Turn with the Protosynthesis for Speed Boost and a Booster Energy. Second <laughs> Doing this would enable me to allow myself to come in to check something by immediately activating my own uh, speed boost. And then I could set up my own sun later to get that speed boost back and make sure that Hydro Steam does more damage. Zepstrika, I brought as a pseudo check to the Rillaboom with Volt Switch, Terra Blast, Ice, Supercell Slam, and Flame Charge. This was one of my three Pokemon this week where I was just trying to nab a speed boost. Or four Pokemon, actually. Four of these Pokemon, I just wanted to grab a speed boost and hit as many things as possible, as fast as possible. So with Flame Charge, I could outspeed his entire team, and I only put enough speed on there for Chi Yu. And with Rillaboom, I thought that he might bring the Rillaboom, and in that degree, 
Sap Zipper means that I'm immune to Rillaboom's Grassy Glide, and then I get an attack boost. Terra Ice, of course, allows me to hit the, the Ursaluna. If there's one thing I learned in this draft league is that I really like electric type Terras. Being able to switch between that bolt beam coverage is so nice, especially when the Pokemon is fast. I've got a blast. Up next, the third Pokemon that I wanted to grab an attack or speed boost with, <laughs> and then try to sweep, was Mouse Hold. Now I was expecting him to bring, bring Stealth Rocks, and I thought I'd be switching out a lot. With Mouse Hold, I have U-Turn, Bite, Tidy Up, and Population Mom. I have to call us in. Okay. Just a minute. Daddy. You just have to see a second ID. Okay. This doesn't look like you. Data bird. So now you can see I have the flip turn on the walking wake, I have the volt switch on Zepstrika, and the U-turn on Mousehold. That's right, we're going for a blender approach here. My, I was hoping that I could hit him and swap out, hit him and swap out, and just kind of keep on keeping him in off that back foot and keeping a lot of priority. And I haven't really run that type of mode with this team yet, so I thought it might take him off guard. Mousehold, just like Zepstrika or walking wake, after a tidy up boost, will allow me to outspeed his entire team. And I put heavy duty boots on mouse hold because it was gonna be really important to preserve mouse holds HP if I uh, wasn't able to get rid of his Pokemon before they set up their entry hazards because I had no hazard control myself this week. The final Pokemon that I brought was Crocodile, high horsepower, knockoff, Scale Shot and Substitute with the Lechi Berry. Lechi Berry activates when your Pokemon is at 25% HP or less and it gives you an attack boost. Heads up! and I put Intimidate on Crocodile, so it would be kind of like a way to soften up some of his more offensive Pokemon, like the Ursaluna or the uh, Sneasler. I could come in on them and then that Intimidate, even if I had to swap out, it means I can bring something in a little bit easier. Here I was thinking though, if he did bring the Mesprit or to a lesser extent, the Diancy, those are things that I could substitute up on and be faster than, and then get down to my Lechi Berry and then Scale Shot and try to do as much damage as possible. Once again, after a plus one speed boost, my Crocodile outspeeds his entire team. I thought he might bring a Scarfer, but I was really more anticipating one of his slower Pokemon being a Scarfer more so than like a Scar Sneasel or something like that. He didn't really need his fastest Pokemon to be faster than me in my, in my team prep at least is what I saw. That was the first one. And then my last Pokemon for this week is Clefable. For Clefable, I have Misty Terrain, Moonblast, Wish, and Stealth Rock. Clefable is here to get up the Stealth Rock. I went with Magic Guard this week with max HP, max defense, with a little bit into speed, just to make sure I don't speed anything, trying to creep that uh, base 60 speed that Clefable has. Uh, Misty Terrain also interrupts his grassy terrain shenanigans. Oh God, please don't say shenanigans. And it would have the secondary effect of preventing Ursa Luna from getting its um, flame orb activated. When Misty Terrain is up, then not only do Dragon Moves do less damage, but also Pokemon that are touching the ground cannot be afflicted with a status condition. And so his Flame Worm wouldn't activate. Uh, and that also stops the Sneasler from having the Grassy Seed activate if I switch on the Misty Terrain and then KO that Rillaboom. That is the team, that is the horde for the week. Really looking forward to this matchup. I am very excited for the opportunity to battle everyone this season because every single one of my battles, barring some weird ritualistic faux pas have just been very memorable for me and i anticipate that this one will be no different <laughs> <laughs> okay everyone it is time to battle Round uh, because of how i started recording this i actually missed the first part of the recording <laughs> mounte ended up bringing his um spectrier the sneezler the chi the blastoise the Mesprit and the Squawk ability to this battle. So here I just decided to lead with Mousehold because it would allow me to immediately scout out for a Rocky Helmet somewhere. That is the biggest liability for Mousehold is just seeing if there's a Rocky Helmet somewhere around. And if he did stay in, I could also gauge um, what type of Mesprit he is, especially if he didn't, if he does not Terra right away, since he didn't bring the Galvantula, this is his only Terra Captain, and so it can go either Psychic, Steel, or Poison. If he stays Psychic, I can really gauge some damage off of a U-turn here. But he immediately Terras, which is great, that means I don't have to guess later on, and he Terras into the Poison type. With Mesprit's ability of Levitate, that means that Terra Poison, his only weakness is Psychic type moves. And if you look through my team, 
I don't have a lot of psychic type moves. I don't have any. So we're going to have to whittle this thing down a little differently. Now, after Mouse Hole's U turn, we don't see uh, Rocky Helmet, which is fantastic. And he goes for his own U turn and he takes the opportunity to go out to a Squawk Ability. Now, I was not really sure what he wanted to do with Squawk Ability because when he came in, I didn't see a Flame Orb. There was no Intimidate. And so I wasn't sure what it wanted to do. Again, my goal was to get up the Stealth Rocks and then to hopefully put things into a blender and just keep on using my moves that allow me to hit and then swap out to something else. Squawk Ability typically runs more physically oriented type moves and so I felt very comfortable staying in with my Clefable here. But then if he wanted to go for something more supportive, Squawk Ability does get some supportive moves like it gets Parting Shot for example, but in no way did I expect Air Slash. That. I was like, is he just trying to flinch me down? I'm not really sure here. But fortunately, I do not flinch. And I'm able to get up my Stealth Rocks. And thinking that he just might stay in an Air Slash again, I went for Moon Blast, but he goes for Final Gambit. Final Gambit KOs yourself in exchange for doing that same amount of damage to your op opponent's HP, depending on how much HP you had. So he was probably max HP um, and max speed, I would guess. And that sucks, because my Clefable would have been really useful to have against um, the rest of his team, if only for throwing off wishes and keeping things alive later. So he goes out to the Blastoise. I decided to go out to Mousehold on the Double Down, which are the best types of downs. I haven't been able to say that in so long. Man, I love Double Downs. Usually people go out to their fastest Pokemon here. And so I was expecting him to go out to the maybe the Spectrea or the Sneasler. But since he goes out in the Blastoise, I know he's going to try to spin here. And I did not want to let him spin. And I had a great shot uh, at KOing him with Population Bomb. I just need to get all 10 hits. And so I go for the Population Bomb. And we're waiting. I get a crit there on the seventh hit, eighth hit, ninth hit, and it stops at nine hits. So I would have taken no crit and 10 hits, or I would have taken a crit uh, and, and, and just then, I don't know. Either way, I needed one more hit and I don't get it. And so that means he's able to rapid spin and remove my hazards. And I was like, oh, this is going to be such an annoying battle now. Cause I, whenever that happens, I just always anticipate things barely living. So here I went for tidy up, expecting him to flip turn, expecting me to swap out. And that was a little bit of a gamble because if he was in torrent range, he could have just blown me out of the water or into the water, blown, blown me with water. Let me stop saying blow me. I think I have the strength to inflate. Thanks, Gumball. Whatever, man. Uh, but he ends up going for the flip turning. He goes out to Spectrier. And I decide to call his bluff here because at plus one, I outspeed him. And I can also kill him with a bite. So the only way that this play makes sense is if he's scarfed. And I could have gone out into my Terrakion. Again, Terrakion was designed to be my dedicated especially defensive check to the Spectrier and the Chi Yu. But I have seen Mounte make this bluff before. I've been watching him for about a year now. And so I did just stay in and go for the bite. And he is choice scarfed. So that is unfortunate. Uh, Spectrier always gets a plus one special attack boost whenever it KOs a Pokemon. But since now I know he's choice scarfed, that means that he is locked into a psychic type move. And I have a dark type to take advantage of this. I do have to be careful with Crocodile because Crocodile easily invites in the Sneasler after um, it KOs something or uh, just in any any situation, Sneasler is like, oh great, Crocodile, I'll happily come in on that. And so I do have Substitute exactly for that reason. Now anticipating him to swap out here, I go for the Substitute first. He goes back out to his Blastoise. And this is great because that means I get a free plus one speed against the Blastoise. I was kind of considering, do I need to get to plus two so that I can hopefully outspeed the Spectrier, or does that lower my defense too much and the, the the chance in which I'm facing down, I don't know, priority fake out or or Mesprit using U-turn? Because even though I have the knockoff for the Mesprit, after I get rid of that item, it's not going to be doing very much damage. And so I was really weighing my options here. I do kind of wish I had Moxie in this situation because if I had Moxie instead of Intimidate, I would have gotten plus one attack right there. And that would have been a fantastic position to be in. I would have had plus one attack and plus one speed. 
Granted, the Spectre still outspeeds at plus one, and he is, he definitely has the uh, Draining Kiss coverage move that Spectre A picked up. Why Game Freak decided to give Spectre A Draining Kiss, I do not know. That thing did not need any form of recovery alongside its speed and Grimne. Ridiculous. But here we are. We have to face down these threats. And uh, Spectre A is a ghost type, so maybe we can use it for some sort of ritualistic summoning later on. Mesprit does come in and I'm able to just knock it off and that does do a clean amount of damage. Uh, I was not sure. I have a few 50-50s to make here, right? Because he's gonna break my sub easily when I have minus one defense. And that allows him to get for the U-turn and then swap out into something. He brings in the Sneasler and I was like, wait, is he double scarf? Cause that would be pretty cool. If he's not Scarf, I can just kill him right here. But also he can just go back to the Mesprit, even though I don't really know what that gains him. I was very tempted to go for a substitute, but I decided to just go for high horsepower, wanting to see if this was Scarf as well. Cause if he was Scarf, then I could just swap into something on whatever his, his locked in move was. Uh, he does go back out into Mesprit, and that's where that Levitate ability comes into play. But you can also see here, I've forced him to swap out a few times. If I had just taken out the Blastoise and kept up my Stealth Rocks, then this Mesprit would be in range for possibly another knockoff. Uh, I do go for Substitute here. I really do wish I had gone for that on the last turn because then I could have thrown off another knockoff either way. Uh, but since I wasted a turn going for high horsepower, I'm not going to be at low enough HP to get my late Chi Berry. That is okay in a sense though, because if I were at that low range of HP and I didn't have another boost from the scale shot, he would just go out into Spectre and finish me off with Draining Kiss anyway. So I was trying to balance how much HP I was using up here while still forcing him out. And he does go out into the Spectre now. It's time to reveal the Assault Vest Terrakion. I'm expecting him to go for Draining Kiss and that will not do very much to this Terrakion at all. And on the plus side, I can attempt the same approach later on with Crocodile. With any of my Pokemon that can boost their speed, I can come in at any time, grab a speed boost and see what I can do. So Crocodile did a great job there, but you can see how little damage that does. And I know he's locked into that move. He's probably just gonna go back out to the Mesprit here. And if he stays in, I get to two hit KO him with my Terrakion and Stone Edge. Um, even if I had zero attack investment on Terrakion, Stone Edge, two hit KOs, um, non bulk invested Spectre. So Stone Edge does hit, thankfully. We're able to take out the Mesprit. And now I do admit that this invites in a few different things because he's obviously not going to go onto the Chiyu here. Uh, Sneasler is just an, a really easy swap in. And I don't have a good swap into the Sneasler, but what I do have is I can intimidate him in order to hopefully set up something later. He surprises me and goes for a Swords Dance immediately. If I had just stayed in and clicked high horsepower, that would have been very funny to me. But that also probably would have been a misplay on my part if I had stayed in and, and made that bluff. Just with the Chi Yu in the back, me staying in there didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so I do go out to Crocodile here. He does get the plus one after the Intimidate. And I know he's gonna outspeed me, but this does lower his defenses. And this also confirms that, of course, he's not Scarfed. I decided to wait to see, do I see Life Orb? No Life Orb either. And he doesn't get uh, any sort of um, white herb to, to activate that Unburden. And so that means if I come out here with my Walking Wake and my own booster energy activates that, I will outspeed this Sneasler. Um, now that does invite him to switch out immediately because I think he does need Sneasler and Spectre Air for the, last, uh, the end game. And I went for a Dragon Pulse, just wanting to make sure I get a guaranteed hit off somewhere. And he knows I outspeed him unless he's some, I don't, he doesn't have any way to outspeed me here. So I could just finish it up with the water move after I take it uh, a little bit of damage with the, the Dragon Pulse there. Now I was trying to decide if this was a good time to maybe set up Sunny Day. Um, the downside would be I'd have to take a dark type move from the Chiyu. I really didn't want to risk that if he were specs or something like that. Uh, Chi is just so strong and my special defense is lowered as well because of Chi Yu's ability. There's a chance he could have KO'd me there. Um, so here he goes back out to the Spectre. 
I know that he's faster because of the scarf and I was really struggling on what to do here and I do decide to just stay in and try to hit it, thinking that I could finish it off later with the stone edge from my Terrakion. Now, this might have been a little bit of a misplay because now I've used up some of the HP on my Walking Wake. If I had gone directly out to the Terrakion, I would have taken damage down to maybe about half health and I would have been able to immediately respond with the Stone Edge or um, at high horsepower expecting the Sneasler to come in on a Stone Edge. Now Walking Wake cannot take another Shadow Ball and I still end up swapping out to my Terrakion anyway. So it would have been better to swap out immediately and to preserve that HP. Uh, we do see the HP on Terrakion drop to right around half and that means I can take another Shadow Ball quite comfortably. And here I went for high horsepower, expecting the Sneasler to come in on the expected Stone Edge. If I just Stone Edge there, then he absolutely drops. Now I'm not sure how much that misprediction mattered in the long run, because at this point I don't have anything that can take two Shadow Balls from the Spectrier. Uh, from this range, Terrakion goes down. If I bring in Walking Wake, then that goes down as well, and he gets a boost either way. And I, I basically played this whole game with five Pokemon because I never found a good opportunity to bring in Zep Strike up. Um, and while I did really like Zep Strike up's coverage for this match, since he didn't bring the Ursa Luna, he didn't bring the Rillaboom, he didn't even bring the, um, the Diancie, all of which Zep Strike can kind of take advantage of. Zep Strike was a little bit of a dead team slot here. So I did decide, unfortunately, to try to go out here but unfortunately it's just going to be too little too late there's no way that shadow ball misses and that means that he's just going to snowball this end game with just nothing but shadow balls so i would have loved to see how this would have played out if i had just gone straight for stone edge instead of trying to predict this newsletter to come in but alas i still enjoyed this match monte i think it would have been very interesting to see how it would have played out if i had prevented those stealth rocks from um, being removed from the field very shrewd to remove those ASAP just for the team that he brought. But man, is it nice to have just a, a really good, honest match? There have been so many weird battles in the Pokemon Premier League for me this season, and it's nice to not have anything too crazy happen during a battle. Granted, you know, if we could have hit critical hit all 10 hits of Population Bomb, that also would have been crazy. But um, sometimes you just appreciate a clean match. I think that's what Addison was saying at one point. It's just like, you know, I'm just hoping for a clean match. There's just too much going on. And especially when your opponents are so powerful and they're so smart and their teams are so good. I sometimes enjoy a cleaner match because it gives me a better indication of my ability and my preparation. So I hope you all enjoyed this battle. Thank you all so much for watching. I just realized that this was a clean match because I got to use tidy up. That's probably it. We got to clean up the battlefield. We have to have a clean match against Mounte. And it's going to be a good week. Be sure to go check out his side of the battle. And in the meantime, have a great weekend. Goodbye.